because I've got some carving to do, so I'll do some carving while this is on here. If you have questions, go ahead and throw them in there. My wife, my, my wife, my daughter is uh, checking in, so I'm just having a bit of fun here and kind of playing around. This is a uh, a signature board for a friend of mine who's getting married, and so I'm going to be carving this in there, and I've got a frame to go around it, um, and then everyone can write their names and things they want on it at the wedding, and then they can take it and hang it up later. So I'm going to carve these all out, fill them with epoxy, and then smooth this down. But, uh, now we're doing this. So if anyone has questions, throw them in the chat. Melody will read them off for me. I'm just taking it a little deeper and a little deeper. Each pass a little deeper. And on this one, it doesn't have to be terribly pretty down in the cut because I'm going to be filling it with a an opaque epoxy. I want to get a nice clean edge to it. If you have any questions, throw them in there. Everyone's just saying hello right now. Well, hello. Where's everyone from? Any locations here? Uh, we got like um, Melbourne? Melbourne? Something like that. I'm... Melbourne? Australia? Uh, sure. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm... Melbourne? Uh, we got one question. Uh, could we get a close up of your Yeah, image? move it in now. There you go. Oh. We got one from England. Oh, okay. I just popped out a little chip there, but uh, I don't need to clean out the bottom on this because it's going to be filled with epoxy. Okay. I just need to have a sharp edge. Um, What's that? We got another question. Do you have to go with the grain to do this? The nice thing with the V-tool is you don't have to worry about the grain as much because one side is always going to be cutting with the grain. It means the other side is always cutting against the grain. So it doesn't matter what you're doing, you're always going to be kind of going against the grain. So that means you need to keep this sharp. So come on over here now. So I have the, the strop here. Every five or six minutes, I'm just going to come over and freshen the edge a little bit. And onto the bevel at the bottom. And then on to the other side, and then to do the inside, just like that. Uh, we got another question. What's that? Do you have a fan mail P.O. box? Uh, yes, I do. Um, if you go to the About tab on my Facebook page, um, so you actually go to the main page for the channel, on the About tab there will be a link where you can see the address to send to. Um, I think I also have it listed on my website, but I don't remember for sure. Oh, we got another question. Uh, do you start shallow and increase the depth? Um, on these big letters, yes. On the small letters here, I just go at depth. But I'm basically just trying to remove the dark brown. And I don't have to make the bottom very clean on this, which is really nice if you're going to fill it with epoxy. In a moment, I'll grab the test sample and show you what we're doing. Yeah, can you show them how little I'm actually tapping this? Get really the hammer on the, the head. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we got a comment saying, uh, I tried my first wood carving at a bench last night. It turned out terrible, but I had a nice time. Perfection rarely comes on the first try. <laughs> Carving's not easy if you're not used to it. I've tried before. Off. <laughs> we 
you got another comment. Uh, I'm I'm pursuing that the situation for tarot. I'm presuming that the so, solution for tarot when going across the grain is sharpness. Yes, sharp. Um, and using the impact here um, allows me to it just kind of punches through it rather than giving it time to bend and flex out of the way. Um, so, I mean, I could come in and do all of this freehand without any impact, uh, but I find I get a little more control with the mallet. So we got a comment asking, do you use any European planes? Um, not so much. Most of my planes are metal bodies. Um, I, I mean, I have used them in the past. It's just not my thing. Um, yes, I am. <laughs> here, I'll grab the, the test sample and show you what we're doing here in a moment. <laughs> Actually, I need to grab... This one's a slightly smaller head, so it allows me to get in a little bit more. So this big text I'm using on a larger one. These are both 60 degree. It's just uh, different size bevels. Yeah. Uh, here's the test. So, this is what we were experimenting with. So it's going to get filled with epoxy and then scrape it off. And then we're trying different pins to see what actually works well. Um, and then a, a shellac um, eats up the, uh, the um, what do you call it? Well, either of the pins the shellac does. So we gotta, we're going to put down a, a grain filler first. Everyone's going to sign it, and then I'm going to seal on top after everyone has signed it. So that's what we're experimenting with. <laughs> uh, got a comment uh, saying that they just want to say that they appreciate your videos uh, and you help them restart their passion for woodworking uh, through COVID. Cool. Well, thank you. That's about the best comment I can get. Ooh, right spot. There we go. You want to tell me, or are you just going to say Yeah, what? I'm trying to figure out if the comment is talking to you or other people in the comment section. <laughs> um, it, I also am confused by the wording. That's normal. Yeah. Can we just read it? Sure. Uh, okay, good. Okay, good. You will be receiving a white oak twin start rice screw with a walnuts. And caps and a word. <laughs> oh, is that what you're asking with the uh, the, it's, the address? It's, <laughs> it, oh, well, thank okay. you. <laughs> twin screw, twin, twin screw what? Twin start vice screw with octan octagonal. Um, sorry. Um, walnut end caps with your white oak workbench. Well, that sounds interesting. Yeah, as my bench is. White oak with uh, walnut edging. Uh, yeah, question asking, uh, what are your thoughts on Miller boxes? Miter boxes? Miller box. Mil Milter? M I'm Miter? My I'm sorry. Miter box. Miter. Um, I almost never use them. Um, I find it just faster to free... Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I find it faster to freehand. Um, you just mark out what you want, and you cut to the mark, and you're done. Um, they have big benefits if you are just going to be doing a lot of the exact same angle. Um, they take a slightly different skill to use, though. Um, but if you're always doing the same angle, they're great for that. So you would see them a lot in people doing finish trim. Um, but for general work, I don't use them that much, unless I need to do some weird... Specific angle, sometimes they do help for that. Sometimes I'll come in and I'll do one side of the line, and then I'll come back 
and do the other side. Make them match up nice like. detail work. Again, I'm really not caring too much about the bottom of the carving, as long as the outside edge is nice and smooth, because these are all going to get filled. Let's do it from the side. So this one, I'm going to start the top by just marking it. And then, I'm going to run one side of the line. Better to keep it crazy sharp. So back and forth. In a dog hole. In particular, spending time, this isn't doesn't come to a sharp point. There's actually a rounded gouge in the bottom. And so you need to make sure you hit that rounded part. It doesn't come to a tight point. And the inside. To work just a little bit less reference, a little bit less uh, resistance. Easily. Close to the end because it comes to a point. I'm going to dive in from this end. And then do the other side of the line. You always find you're just kind of wandering around and turning your body to match what needs to be done. Just like that. Now the other side of this. I need to shoot a little bit of footage because this will be in an upcoming video. But you guys get to see it early. Just need to clean that spot up a hair. Just a tiny bit of tear out I didn't want. Let's see what else I want to take out. A little bit of the bottom of this. Back up for a moment. I'm gonna put the camera here. Yeah, you go on that side. <laughs> and we're gonna go back to the small one. These are smaller letters. Okay, we got another question. What was that? How expensive were those two cherry carving chisels? I'm finish this and I'll do it. Well, it's recording. I'm trying not to talk too much. Um, 
I don't remember, I bought these about seven, eight years ago. This one, when I originally bought it, uh, this is the first actual carving chisel I purchased. I convinced my wife to do it so I could make some Christmas presents. Actually, no, they were wedding presents. Um, and I think I paid 25 bucks for this. We drove all the way up to Madison, about an hour away to get it. These, the two cherries came in a set. I usually don't tell people buy sets. Um, but I want to say it was like 250 bucks, but that was about eight years ago, so who knows what they are now. Uh, if you're looking to get in affordably, there's a company called Shaf. S-H-A-F-F, -F, I think it is. Um, and they make really, really good chisels. Um, and if you want them affordably, you can actually get the ones that come really close to sharp. They're not um, professionally sharpened, um, but they are nice. And they're going to take a bit of honing when you first get them. But if you want to spend a little bit more, you can actually get them professionally sharpened, too. Now i got to figure out these eyes. Sometimes I'll take a drill bit and drill a hole. And I think on this one, I'm actually going to kind of make them a little bit elongated. I'm going to spear in from one side. And spear in from the other. What other questions we got? Uh, it's not a question, just uh, someone saying, uh, there's something weirdly meditative about watching James carving wood. Let's grab a small skew chisel. I want to get those in a little bit deeper because I'm filling these with epoxy. Uh, they have to be deep enough to actually hold it so when I scrape it off they don't disappear. So I'm just going to use this to poke down a little bit harder, a little bit deeper, pull out a little bit more material. A little skew chisel. I could do this as like a marking knife even. There's that one. And then let's go into the finish the eye and into the owl. And these ones I'm just doing a single pass. Just like the pin would do with cursive. Now I need to be careful with this L because I want to leave this space in between here. And because I'm going to cross grain, it's really, really easy here for that to pop out and break. So I'm playing on the safe side and kind of going a little ways away from it. I'm going to do the same thing on this side as well. Okay, don't get another try at this one. If I mess something up, i got to make a whole new board. Not what I want to do. we got another question. What's have that? you read Moisten Tenon magazine? Yes, I have every single one of those. I started getting theirs when they first came out, what, six years ago, seven years ago, something like that? Uh, we got another question. Uh, but I've even kept all the original wrapping from them. What's next? Uh, it's comment up to the one that I, I, I'm not sure if this is talking with each other I have to add, but it says uh, but is it because James is weird or weirdly vitigris? I am so sorry I have, I have no idea what that is uh, yes I am weird uh, but not as weird as my daughter <laughs> yeah I'm crazy <laughs> or so she thinks she is she has yet to figure out what true craziness actually is. Someday she'll be to the same level as I am. But you just said that uh, you're not as crazy as me. Yes. There's proof that I am crazier. The sentence is usually used as a sense, as in meaning you are less than the other person. But I am crazy, so it's different. <sighs> We got another question. Um, do worry about air getting. Do you worry about air getting into your epoxy container and spoiling it? No. I've had epoxy sitting on the shelf, opened up for five years, and it still works perfectly fine. Uh. Yeah. Another question. What project? Would you say would be good and easy for someone very new to woodworking with little skill and has access to a table saw, chisels, and drill, and of course things like nails, sandpaper, etc. Well, the first thing you need to build, <laughs> the very first project that anyone should build is their workbench. It is the first thing 
And it's great because if it's not perfect, that's not a problem because you will make more in the future. Um, but you want to make a bench because it makes everything else easier. And until you have a bench, everything else is a pain to work on. My first project wasn't a bench. No, well, you have a bench to work on because you use my stuff. <laughs> sure, um, I used after to that, it, it just comes down to what are you interested in. Um, because where you are, where your interests are, that will keep you focused. And so, if you want to make a, a Queen Anne highway for your first build, go for it. It won't be the best one in the world. It won't be great. But as long as you take it step by step, even a beginner can build one. I got a question for me. Why are you not in school, young lady? Because my dad requires me to work right now. <laughs> and um, I enjoy it. Melly's homeschooled. <laughs> so she was almost done with her school for the day. So I said, yeah, come on downstairs. I'll pay you. Yeah, just so get... She is my social media manager. Mm -hmm. And uh, so occasionally she does things like this. She's <laughs> but yeah, she's... What are you, three years ahead in school? Uh, I would be in eighth grade right now. I'm currently a junior, so yeah, three years ahead. You're in 11th grade? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so are you going to finish high school before Arthur? Hopefully. <laughs> I mean, he is a year behind me, even though he's like three years younger than me. And is that the same grade as JJ? Saying, whoa, child labor. Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> My first job, well, I, I've been working pretty much full time since I was uh, four or five, <laughs> or actually like five or six. Um, but uh, I almost always had a job. So I was homeschooled. So I'd often do my schooling in the evening and go work in the morning because a lot of the places liked it that they could get a, a guy to come work in the morning when everyone else was in school because it was hard to get cheap labor at that time. <laughs> yeah, and see, this one has this little, tiny little point sticking out here and so I could carve that but I'm not going to because it's a little too detailed <laughs> there's a comment saying come on guys he's using for her for a tax break not an actual labor not actual labor actually I can't even use her for a tax break yet I'm 13 not 14 because <laughs> I can't actually give her a w2 until then so right now it's just uh um, that's what I'm looking for to, uh, stipend? No, what's the what's the word? When you pay kids. Um, what do you mean pay kids? When you pay your kids something for doing chores. Um, allowance. Allowance, there we are. <laughs> I told her we'd pay her minimum wage in the, the day that she became legally a worker. <laughs> no, you told me that I had to make better quality. Oh, yes. to get paid minimum wage by you got a lot of learning to do. But you're getting like, it. You're getting it. Yeah, but I got like seven months till my birthday, so <laughs> <laughs> it's enough time. I've got a question. Do you know anyone who makes good videos on casting gold and silver? Um, not really. I haven't done any of that forever. I'm not, I'm out of that game. I, uh, yeah, when I was, um, looking at getting engaged, I started looking at the price of rings and what went into them, and I thought, you know what? I can make that. And so I made a wedding ring for Sarah. And, uh, so I've done a good bit of gold casting, but it's been a long, long time. I think that goes just a hair deeper. So i got to finish out this, do the two eyes, and then i got to do the circumference. I'm going to move this off, fill it with epoxy, and 
call it good. Uh, got a question. Do you get income only from YouTube? Wow, we got into so many questions about my pants. Uh, yes, I am a full-time YouTuber. So that is my only income. Um, the actual ad revenue is only about 20% of my revenue. A lot of it is product sales, and that's becoming more and more on my website. Um, but there's also Patreon is a huge chunk of it. <laughs> wow, wow. Okay, why, do, why are we now talking about We got another one. Actually, James, you can legally add her to payroll now if you wanted by the IRS Regulation 12 and under can be put on a payroll. Interesting. Yeah, uh, the problem is Illinois has other laws that I would have to fill into, and I really don't want to mess with those right now. Um, so I gotta wait till So at the moment she just gets an allowance. <laughs> eh. But uh, next year we will be reworking that. We'll so we'll see. <laughs> and I still have to go to the local high school. To get approval for her to work for me. Um, so. But I don't even go to the yep, local. But I still have to go to the local high school, even though you're homeschooled. I am your teacher, and you are working for me. I still have to get approval from the local high school. That's stupid. Um. Uh, we got a comment from me. Can, is that gonna play I meant to say what or not. What's that? Um, hi there, Melody. Loved your little short the other day. Thank you. Uh, don't settle for less than $20 an hour plus benefits. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, she gets a whole vacation plan with her job, so. <laughs> it's because you give it to me. Here, I'm going to shoot. All right, plan Carving this eye. So hang on for a moment. Focus. There we go. And so, quiet a moment. What other questions we got? Uh, none right now. Yeah, you looking forward to actually getting paid and doing taxes every year? <laughs> I'm not looking forward to taxes. Yeah, this will probably be your last year not doing taxes. Yeah, I'm not excited for that. <laughs> I mean, I won't have to pay as much as you. No, you won't actually pay taxes. <laughs> You will not make enough to get to pay, but because you are dependent, you probably won't get anything back, or at least not much. And then I gotta figure out payroll. No more things I gotta do. <laughs> you got my, we got a comment saying her benefits include room and board, food, tr transport, education. <laughs> okay, ah, uh, this one. Now this one, the drawing was off, and so I have to make this side bigger than that side, just to try and make this even. And I'm just running down one edge of the line. I'm using the inside edge as my guide.
a quarter of the way. So normally I would be doing this on a Wednesday with Luke, my videographer here, but in order to, I have to get this project basically done tomorrow, so I've got to get all the epoxy in so when he comes we can actually shoot the rest of it. So I'm shooting some of this on the camera. Uh, not questions, just more stuff about what we were talking about earlier. Uh, Taxes and all? Yeah. Please. Shoot okay. this spec section. One of the problems with straight lines and curved lines, nice even circular lines, is that you've got to get them perfect. Otherwise, the eye catches any little imperfection in a circle or a straight line. And so they get very, very difficult to do. I'd rather do an oval over a circle, but still a bit of a pain. It's like a click track. I got a comment saying James needs new rings. New rings? Which kind of rings? I only have the one. Well, I've got a silicone one when I do weightlifting. And the key, the trick to good carving is making sure you chew your tongue. I never notice I'm doing it, but I get comments all the time. Why are you chewing your tongue? Set this up to finish the clip. <laughs> oh, goodness. What's that? Uh, we got uh, three comments up. Do you have any videos on an old wooden bodied router planes? Oh, yeah, I've got a bunch of videos making those. I probably made uh, seven, seven or eight different router planes over the years with wooden body versions. I made them from um, kits and scratch and made them live and got a bunch of videos on making router planes. Uh here just a second I'm gonna shoot this and once I finish this circle. Actually, I better finish it from this side so they can actually see it if they can finish. Who we got? Um, next one was uh, James. I'm glad you're working because I've stopped because this is so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so at the uh, oval, I'm just coming through and seeing spots that aren't quite as fair as I'd like them to be. I'm cleaning them up a little bit. We got a bunch of comments saying you sound like a knocking piston. <laughs> Yep. Uh, we got a question. Color. What color will the epoxy be? Um, brown. I know. Brown. Brown's and pretty. And so, 
rather than normally I'd come to this point and I'd scrape this all off. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the paper on here. I'm going to go ahead and put epoxy onto it. I just need to make sure that all of the little bits have come out. And I'm not leaving any paper into the epoxy. And so now I've just got the little detail here. Another question I get all the time is, why are your hands so shaky? Because uh, they've always been shaky. It's just the way I is. So I'm getting rid of anything that is sticking up on the edge or the brim of any of these. Where the epoxy will be filling them in. Because I don't want any paper going down into one and being stuck into the epoxy. But I want the paper on top because it helps fill some of the pores so that it doesn't bleed into the wood as much. Now this is maple, hard maple. Um, so it's a little bit better at that. It doesn't bleed as easily. Actually, it doesn't bleed much at all. Uh, we got a question. Do you use any particular brand of chisels for this type of work? Um, no, I mean, I've got uh, File and Two Cherries are, are some of the best in the market. If you get these, um, they'll, they'll serve you really well. Um, but I've also got Shaft, I've got Antiques, um, I've got some uh, Veritas, um, not Veritas, um, um, Ner Nerex, there it is, Nerex. <laughs> got a comment saying, I found a new way to check if my chisel is sharp. Drop it on your bench, reflex, re reflex catch it, and admire the damage. Wouldn't recommend, it, wouldn't recommend, but it's a way. <laughs> Actually, that's that is exactly how I test my marking knives. I just <laughs> drop them and see if they stick. Um, okay, um, pointed over here is I'm going to mix up some epoxy. And I think I'm going to need two pumps. And then I'm going to need a brush and I need some transparent dye. So I'm going to use this to uh, actually dye it. I'm going to be behind you here. Okay. Eh, <laughs> One, two, one, two. I think my calculation before was four drops of transient dye, so as long as I'm like four to six, I should be okay. And I'm going to mix it ahead of time because I'm not going to this over here. I want to make sure it's completely mixed. I don't want any soft spot in it at all because I need to be able to carve it tomorrow. So mixing is key. Any questions? Uh, no, but we got a comment uh, saying, I think he meant drop it off the bench and get stabbed in the hand trying to get it. Wow. Yeah, that's actually uh, <laughs> that scar right there is uh, probably the worst hand tool accident I've had. I was rolling off the bench and I, my brain saw it going and so I went down to catch it and my body went down faster than it did and it came down and speared me in the hand. <laughs> Alright, now some trans tint dye. What color is this? This is, what is it? dark mission brown. So let's see if I can do four drops. One, two, three, four. There, nice and rich. That's pretty. I want to see how thin it is. So what I actually do is I put it on the rim, and you can see how dark it is. Actually, I think I need a couple more drops. I need because it, it, it's really dark when it's thick. But once it gets thinned out into some of those thinner ones. Uh, we got a question. Yeah. What kind of wood is your mallet? What kind of wood is your mallet that you? Be this is uh, live oak. <laughs> And it is one of my favorites. I love this piece. It's just it's beautiful, good balance. There's a lot. Of I've got a video of making this. It's, those aren't knots. That's actually oh. the way the tree grows. That's its grain. Oh. Um, live oak is a really twisted, twisted wood, and it's very beautiful. Okay, um, stop that. Thank you. Making sure it's fully, thoroughly, completely, and totally 100% mixed up. <laughs> That's just totally mixed up. 
messed up, not mixed up. I want complete entropy. That should be good. All right. Come over here. And now, I don't want it to be even with the top. I want it to be slightly over the top. I want it to have a slight bubble on top. And that means that it will, I can smooth it out later with a card scraper. So now, go over to whole thing. I want to make sure it works in there. I don't want any bubbles down in there because I don't want to find any bubbles. But being so thin, um, it will the bubbles work out really quickly. <laughs> what? Leah comments saying, don't forget to put it in a vacuum chamber to suck the air out of the epoxy. I could do that, but because these are so shallow, the bubbles actually come out really, really quickly. Oh. Um, so there is no issue with this thin fill-in. Uh, if I were doing a thicker pour, definitely. We got a question. Do you have any transitional planes? Yeah, we got a couple. I don't use them very often. They're mostly just for educational purposes here. Um, I'm not a huge fan of transitional planes. A lot of people do like them, though. Nothing wrong. Is epoxy supposed to have a smell? <laughs> what? Is epoxy supposed to have a smell? A little bit. Okay. So I can kind of smell it. Yeah. If you work with epoxy, epoxy regularly, a respirator is a very, very good thing to have. Um, I don't use it that much, and when I do, it's in small quantities like this. Though I have gotten to the point I'm thinking about getting a respirator. What I don't want is a spot that is not full. Uh, we got a question. Do you heat the epoxy for bubble removal? Um, I might hit this with a torch once it's all in there. But again, this is it, there's so little here that the bubbles come right to the top very, very quickly. So there aren't any massive bubbles in here. And if there are, you can see them very easily. And they're usually clinging, clinging to the bottom of the, the epoxy pool. Yeah. I got a comment saying, I took your advice and got two sets of cherry chisels. I know you don't ha usually recommend beginners getting a set, but it was a birthday present. Also, I have a scar on my hand from a chainsaw. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's something about getting a full set of chisels that you just, you can't resist. And I've fallen for it a couple times myself. Um, it's just nice having all of them, even though you know you're probably not going to use all of them. <laughs> I have, like my two cherries set, I got eight years ago, and half of them I have never used. And another two or three I've only used once. I've used the two cherry chisels a couple of times myself. Mm -hmm. Now the V-tools, you use those all the time. V-tools, the little skews, those are phenomenal. Uh, we got a comment saying, uh, what is the what is a good task slash, slash project you would let my six-year-old daughter help with? <laughs> you know, making um, hand propellers, those are fun done that with you a couple times. Yeah. Those are yeah. really easy because you can just give them a spoke shave. A spoke shave is such a nice thing because once you set it up, any monkey can run with it. There's there's almost no skill involved with a flat bottom spoke shave. And so very, very easy for a kid to use. Um, running the brace, you hold one side, they run the other. That's a lot of fun. I've got a, a bunch of um, kids projects on my site with free plans. Um, making toolboxes and bird houses, bird Feeders. What was my first project? I don't know. I don't recall, but I do remember my first video was just me fiddling around with tools. 
Now, for those of you who don't know, Melody has a couple of YouTube channels herself. <laughs> One's called Melody's Workbench, where she does some woodworking. She just put up a Christmas ornament video on there. Yep. And then she's got a fun one that she does that uh, called Mel Studio. Yeah, you can find it on my channel. I made sure to put it on the page because just searching up that channel yeah. is a pain. <laughs> We got a comment saying, a six-year-old using a spoke shave, that's too young to have sharp objects around. I had a saw when I was six. Yeah, I <laughs> think the spoke shave I think all my kids have handled even a chisel at five. <laughs> yeah, you made sure we got into it early. <laughs> I was working at a construction site at five. <laughs> Reminds me of when I was in first grade and I showed some other kids my channel and uh, one of the kids said that was dangerous for me to have a saw and was like, okay. <laughs> Teaching the safety is the important thing. Yes. Do it right and you've taught them more than just using it. <laughs> oh, I'm going to shoot video of this. <laughs> This actually has to go into a regular channel video. And I'll grab the propane torch and hit them all up. Yeah, what I want to do is get down here and look and see if there's any low spots. I think we're good. So let's grab the propane torch. Super satisfying. Um, That's about it. This is pretty good. Oh, it's being cool. Um, we got a comment yeah. saying. Turn around and show this. Oh. So I've got in the shop. I have rubber floors. So I've got this concrete block. I actually used that to do some uh, sharpening videos. And I set these on here because if there's too much left in there. Um, they tend to um, combust or melt. I don't want them melting on the rubber. Um, I got a comment saying, I see you have a Cooper's plane behind you. Do yep. you use it at all? No, um, no I don't. I have a video remaking this one because um, the iron is too small and the wedge wasn't working. Um, so I got the video of getting this one up and running again. And I want to do some coopering work um, and I've got a whole box of Cooper tools that were given to me and a couple more that I've purchased. Um, and it's one of those things I really want to do, but uh, I haven't gotten around to it. So, uh, uh, We got a comment saying, I think it's time for a required dad slash mom joke. <laughs> Has there been a super chat? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, super chat for it. <laughs> no, I've got, uh, here, we got this. I got a new, I got a new joke book. <laughs> Let's How many joke books do you have? A bunch of them. Let's see. Okay, let's pick uh, this one. Why was Newton surprised when he was hit on the head by an apple? He was sitting under a pear tree. <laughs> cool. Um, I think that's about it. So I'll um, wrap this one up. We got a few more. Um, pan it up here a little bit more. Okay. Uh, Use the, there you go. Yeah, uh, I bought a old oak beam that was above a fireplace i would love to remove the products any dirt from it without 
changing the shape of it too much. Uh, what are your what are your opinions? What are the options up? Um, Sorry. Brushes, wire brushes work fantastically, um, but a lot of it's just kind of getting in there and, and scrubbing on it. Um, and, but yeah, um, most of the time I'm just going to scrub it to get some dirt out, maybe some compressed air to get it out of cracks. Um, I usually don't go too much more than that if I want to keep the patina. Because uh, if you if you want to smooth it out, you're, you're going to lose the, the dark color and you're going to get into wood underneath. But yeah, usually. We got a comment saying, I used a claw hammer to scratch pig's ears. I rode at four years old. Well, that's interesting. Uh, we got a question. Is it, is shouting fire in a crowded chat room illegal? <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I've never been in a crowded chat room. And then we got uh, one more question. Some more questions. Uh, sure. It's sorry, Ab. What was was that Sarah's? What's on? Was on Sarah's workbench? Uh, what is all that clutter? Whatever. Um, I've got a bunch of projects I'm working on. There's an infill plane. There's a box for 46 cutters. Uh, there's the frame that goes around this. There's the picture windows. There's oh, I know. Was that windows. Sarah's workbench underneath all that clutter? Yeah, yeah, that's Sarah's workbench. Sarah's workbench and the kids' workbench. And the saw bench, and uh, they're all horizontal circles. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm soon here. I'm going to be doing it big, heavy cleaning. So. Yeah. <laughs> and we just got a joke comment. Uh, for the guy who invented zero, thanks for nothing. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, no. That no, is. No, I'll show it. you guys one other little thing. This, I just went and picked up the uh, the new bad axe saw. And uh, so this is the number nine, but it's white oak, brass pieces, brass hardware. Oh, I love this. So yeah, um, I actually have a video coming out on Thursday um, where I'm um, touring their shop and doing a few things. And then I'm going to have a build video coming out uh, in a couple weeks actually showing this one being put together. Yeah. Yeah. We actually had a live a couple days ago of you yep. doing the interview. Um, cool. Uh, any last questions? Uh, we questions? just got a comment saying, wow, nice saw. Uh, oh, come on. Uh, okay, that's just comments talking to each okay. other. Uh, yeah, that's I think I'll be for now. So until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.